Hey guys, it's Alex. Oh, look at that sun. Oh, yo. it's beautiful. It's beautiful down here. So I had an old friend stop by. He said he wanted to sell his Mustang. But before he sold it, he wanted me to have it for a couple of days so that he basically can have it driving as good as possible before he sold it to the next guy. Because, you know, the next guy's going to scrutinize everything because he's asking decent money for this vehicle and you guys might recognize the car believe it or not that's right donnie's car donnie's car that has gone 919 149 mile an hour now oh, come on zoom in baby on a stock 15 motor with cams and um basically he said alex i want you to dial this thing in to drive as good as humanly possible now it is not currently on a luntune but it's gonna be because I think we can dial it in real nice now that I have it in person and I have access to a bunch of cool shit. I really think we can get this car super dialed in. Oh, Donnie's a little bit of a short guy. About to hit my head on this thing. So, <laughs> first thing I'm going to do is start the car. This is like a semi-hot start because it's been sitting for about an hour and a half. Do a hot start. And these are the little things, quirks, that I'm going to have to work out. It's got cams. It's got a monoblade. It's got a PMOS 149. It's got a return style fuel system, an ID 1000s, a 3C converter. I'm sorry, a 2C converter, and a built 6R80 with 315 gears. That's a lot to work with. But I'm going to make this car drive as good as I possibly can so that when he does sell it, the next guy has an absolute, um, you know, good starting point so he can take it from there. So let's start her up. So again, this is like a semi hot start. Let's see how she acts. Hmm, bit of a long crank situation going on there. Got to see what the deal is with that. Oh, get out of here. He's listening to like Counting Crows or some shit. All right, cold start isn't really an issue. It just took a little longer than I like to turn over, but We'll work on that. I'll be logging with the Lund Racing Engage because he smartly never got rid of that. It's a great logging device. So he kept it even though he's on a different uh, company's tune. And we'll go from there. So we are driving a powerful S197 again. I haven't driven, you know, this car makes 800 plus rear wheel. Ooh, there it is. There's a little idle dip as you go into gear. So let's work on that. Um, this car makes over 800 rear wheel horsepower and he daily drives it on that too. Now, why is he selling it? Well, look, the guy's in his uh, advanced age. He's very old. <laughs> He's in his 40s. He wants to just kind of, you know, do the family thing. I get it. And this car is, is, is a great example of what I was talking about, that there are going to be an insane amount of clapped out shit out there. But this thing is taken care of. It's got a newer Gen 2 motor, cams, converter, all the bells and whistles for under $35,000. And it's a nine second car anywhere i mean in any condition any da anything this car is a nine second car it's got a wave track built rear end it's got a take vision anti-roll bar i believe it's got badass control arms i mean the car is done up it has 60 footed i believe low one threes like one three two so imagine you're out there trying to build something how much are you going to be into it by the time it's all said and done to duplicate something like this where you can buy a car like this turn key and be happy for a very long time my job is to get it driving as good as possible but so far so good the first thing i noticed is on aggressive tip and it has that bit of a hesitation a lot of the guys have trouble with it's kind of going wah, 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 kind of very slight luckily the aftermarket converter hides a lot of that but i'll see if i can duplicate it and just like that you're going 80 shit you know you gotta remember you can't be doing stupid things in this car, but very minor things, minor quirks. Uh, going into gear, it kind of dips down and idle a little bit, but that could be a throttle body issue more so than a tune issue. But man, I really like how this car drives because we spent months, me and him, because he's my best friend, refining this thing. So it actually drives pretty damn good. Now that's a big issue, data logging remotely. While Donnie might think this car drives excellent and so do I, the next guy might be like, uh, you know, the pedal's a little short. You know, when I'm in sixth gear and I stab it, when I'm in sixth gear at 55 miles an hour, 1800 RPMs, and I stab it, there's a momentary hiccup. Yeah, because you're going to shove 15, 8, 16 pounds of boost to this car at a low RPM. It's not going to be like, what? You know, beautifully. So I know, I know. Some people say, well, tune around it. 
Well, you guys are recreating conditions that normally don't happen, but that's my job. That's why I said, dude, just drop this car off. It's better for you to drop it off so I can dial it in on my free time. Cause you know, I love to tune on my free time. <laughs> I'm just busting balls. He's a, he's a good friend and I'm happy to do it. And I haven't driven anything fast in a while. So I'm happy to take, uh, take this car off for a spin. A lot of you might be asking, why aren't you data logging that tune? Well, it's real simple. Data logging a tune that I'm gonna get out of there is useless to me because I need to know what's happening with what's in it as opposed to data logging the condition because I don't know if something's being commanded that I'm feeling that isn't supposed to be happening or, or vice versa. A lot of people say, Alex, I got a tune from this shop and it runs like shit. Can you data log it? The only thing I can see is fueling and timing really. Every, and if he's commanding that, then that's not much I can go by. So it's better to data log the tune that you have that you know, in other words, the tune that's going in it that I have access to, it's better to data log that than to data log a tune that I don't have access to anymore. Okay, well, after installing the now Lund tune on Donnie's car, I've noticed a couple things right away. Um, the previous tune was to Donnie's liking and it wasn't to my liking. Um, obviously he drives a lot different than uh, I do. So I think Donnie likes a very short pedal. Basically when he stabs the throttle just a little bit, he wants it to react instantly. The Luntoon that's on this car, I think it's more catered to the general public that likes a semi-stock feeling pedal that's slightly on the longer side compared to Donnie's. I like the, I like the shift schedule better on this setup. There's second, third, command a lockup on part throttle. It actually kind of glides through all of the gears real nicely because what happens is when you have an aggressive lockup, it lugs the engine down pretty aggressively. So even in stock form, the car goes one, two, three, then boom, converted lockup and the RPMs lug down. I think the way this one is set up, actually I know the way this one is set up is it doesn't really lock at part throttles depending on mile an hour and pedal position. Now, if you were to get into it a little more aggressively, the converted lockup does come into play. Okay, so what's the surprise you might ask? You know, well, you heard the idle, and this car has cams. Smooth as silk. La 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 la. Hanging out, having a good old time. Let me back out. Tuning. Low tune. Uh, normal. Ooh, what's that? Uh huh. Let's see how that all goes with a blower application. Oh, you damn skippy, we're gonna flash this tune. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> sell this car now. Take this cam tuned <laughs> stage three cam tuned stage three ghost cam tuned for a drive. Let's chop it nice. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> turn I'm gonna get in trouble driving this cammed car on because I'm gonna go get a loan and get this fucking car from him no stalling doing its thing and I'm not taking credit for this tune guys I'm getting this is all Lund I'm just using their shit
Dude, I love it like because of the converter. When you press on the brake, when you're deselling, it chops on desel. Now, a lot of you guys will say, well, that's gay. Guys, this car has cams. You have to do the same shit you got to do with stock cam cars to these cars in order for them to sound like that. You're not going to just bolt on a set of cams with VCT and have them chop like this. Just not going to happen, period. Look at this. Oh, yeah. Time for cams, Alex. Time for cams. Ghost cams. So I've made some adjustments to the car after um, rocking the cam lope tune for a little bit. Um, I noticed that that's not going to be a tune that he's going to want to daily drive on. It's going to be a tune that he wants to just when he goes to the Kroger parking lot and chops away and wants to, you know, impress the 12 year old girls. He can install that tune, but I'm not going to make that many adjustments to it. Fuck all that. What I'm going to do is make the normal tune drive as best as possible. So if he decides to sell it, the new owner has little to nothing to complain about. So. I got my laptop, got the wire, gonna install everything on the end gauge. I'm not gonna take the SD card out and um, see how all that shit goes. Okay, day number two. Here working on Donnie's car, working on the tune that the new owner's gonna end up having. Um, Donnie's car has been sitting overnight and I wanna go ahead and see what cold start is gonna be like. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, you gotta kinda do everything. You can't just do wide open throttle and warmed up stuff you got to kind of do everything especially if the new owner potential new owner is gonna you know take delivery of it and think the car is ready to go <clears throat> yesterday i revised the tune two more times it needed a little idle work if you guys notice in the video the um if you guys notice in the video let me put you guys up here so i can talk to you with my hands right? there you go if you notice in the video the idle was a little on the high side and I want to make sure that that gets taken care of um, as best as possible. I'm going to go ahead, do a cold start, record it, you know, and see what kind of adjustments it needs, if any. Um, stock, these cars do go up and then slowly come down. Being that this car has cams, it's on E85, it's got a massive cold air intake and a blower on top and long tubes. <laughs> it's got a lot of stuff going on. so. I'm working with a lot of things here, but I'm going to see how it is. It's legit cold. I'm going to flip the camera, show you guys what's going on, and go from there. Okay, let's uh, do a little cold start silliness, see how it all goes. Come on, camera zoom. <laughs> Shit, if that's cold start, it should go up in RPM just slightly, but man, if that's... If, that, if that's the extent of it, I'm going to leave it alone. Crap. Now, legit, it's cold. You can see I didn't, you know, cheat. The engine, uh, the coolant temperature is cylinder head temperature, so 140. So you got to take that into account because when it gets down to 80, 90, 70, it might act a little different. Yes, everything is inferred because there is no actual coolant temperature it's cylinder head temperature so when someone asks you well what's the coolant temp who the fuck knows it's cylinder head temperature inlet air 100 already i haven't done anything i just started it it is wow yeah so it's a little warm out but cold start quote unquote cold start on the normal tune is pretty much this so i'm going to drive it around cruise Go to Dunkin' Donuts, grab a coffee, you know, act like as if I'm driving it normally. I might have to just go get some E85 just to make sure. Air fuel ratio. I know you guys are probably freaking out about air fuel ratio. Look, guys, when you're on E85, that's what it's supposed to be. Plain and simple. So you say, yeah, let's get some E85. Fuck it. Guys are out there probably asking, you know, why is it taking you so long to dial it in? <laughs> Look, this isn't wide open throttle tuning. <clears throat> The easiest thing to tune on these cars is wide open throttle. Wide open throttle, you got a certain cam schedule, certain spark, done. Everything else in between is hard. It's actually uh, not hard, I want to say, once you know what you're doing a little bit, not that I'm an expert, but it's more involved, okay? There's a lot more tables to look at when you're doing this. 
driving through a parking lot, chilling, coasting when the car has cams, converter, and E85 and all this other shit. This is pretty much what you have to do when uh, when the rubber hits when the rubber meets the road. This is kind of what you have to do as a as a as a calibrator tuner. Wide open a hey, wide open throttle. <laughs> Wide open throttle calibration is cake shit. You know what? Ah, you know what? So watt tuners are out there telling you they're the best, but then when the cars drive like shit, you know you you know what the deal is. But a lot of people are afraid to say anything because they don't want to lose that wide open throttle tuning support. It's silly. It's it's politics. It's dumb. But let me go get to me eighty five. Drive this thing around. Get some coffee at Dunkin' Donuts and see what the deal is. Um, you know, see how it acts after it warms up. See if there's anything I need to tweak before I give it back to Donnie. It's actually idling at 860 something RPMs. Perfect. Now, if a new owner says, well, when it was stock, it idled at 710 or 720 or 725, fine. This thing has cams without limiters. E85, a big monoblade throttle body, big cold air. If it idles at 860 and the car's super happy, please be quiet. <laughs> It's fine. It's good. You know, it's not. A lot of people compare calibrations to stock. Well, guys, understand. Stock is just that. So I'm going to hit this fucking duck. Did I hit him? Yep. I fucking hit a duck. <laughs> Let me see if I'm. Oh, yeah, he's dead. <laughs> Fuck. A duck was flying in front of me. And he just. Stupid asshole. It wouldn't flap to the left. He just kept going straight. I thought he ducked left and right. He's like a squirrel. And. You, when you see a squirrel, you, you know, cross three quarters past the street and the son of a bitch turns back. It's stupid squirrel. Anyway, um, what the fuck was I even saying? Yeah, a lot of people compare the calibrations to stock. And I go, look, stock has a hundred, you know, 80 something millimeter, 90 millimeter housing, stock round throttle body, stock injector, stock, you know, pump gas. You can't compare. You want this car to drive like stock, revert everything back to stock. Stop referencing stock. This drives pretty damn good and you can't really compare it to anything else because it's kind of a custom combination so a lot of people out there that are saying like stock really okay but anyway let's get some 85 bit of advice when you guys go get gas go to a gas station that is very busy like this one uh, that means the turnover in the tanks are high and you're more likely to get quote unquote fresh fuel than not 227 a gallon will probably fill up with about 15 bucks 16 bucks okay a little higher than because i was actually pretty low <laughs> so let's get out of here now hot restarts are another thing i gotta work on nope perfect awesome hot restarts cold starts um are things you have to adjust on a car that are has a little you know highly modified hot restarts you know the fuel rails are nice and hot and you know the engine got warmed up so you want to make sure that on startup it fuels properly you don't want that long crank or anything like that everything is going really well let me turn the ac on keep it on with the windows down so it can constantly be pushing cold air out and to see if it acts up if it goes up down if the idle is stable if the idle is stable all the way through the drive through and after i do my test drive i'm delivering the car <clears throat> because i'm so satisfied as to how it's running right now that mm, I really don't think it needs a lot of tweaks and any tweaks that go on to this car past what I think is a great base calibration is basically going to be to the liking of the new customer or Donnie when I give this back to Donnie I'm not gonna tell him to tell me shit I said dude drive it for a week you have the cam lobe tune you can play with. You have the regular tune you can play with. This thing is idling at 850 with the AC on, cams, and it is super smooth idle. So I think this is something that I can deliver with confidence after driving it for two days. I just like how it leaves a light or it leaves a stop sign real nice. this car on pump gas all you have to do is change the stoic point and 
pulley up big time like an 82 or 85 millimeter pulley put pump gas in it switch to tune and just drive it anywhere on pump gas just gotta you know change the story point lower timing to make sure it doesn't see you know optimal e85 timing on pump gas basically Okay, <laughs> I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to order coffee because a lot of you guys stammer and stutter when you're going to the drive thru and it makes me sick. So I'm gonna show you how a pro does it. See if I can even get to the. She probably has a huge accent. Hey, Ralph. There you go. Yeah, smooth it's idling. It was surging before. Oh, 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 oh. Hi, can I get two medium hot coffees, cream and sugar, and okay. a large coffee, cream, iced coffee, cream and sugar? Thank you. She said all right. So I bet you she didn't get that right. I just had um, Christian drive the car real quick just to get a second opinion because. You know, I always want a second set of eyes on something, but it's raining cats and dogs out there, so I want to get his impressions on the normal tune. Oh, oh, I got you, Poppy. I got you. <laughs> How's it drive? That runs nice. Shifts Run nice. nice. No, no, like, uh, surging. Surge rate, surging, yeah, fluctuations. Nice. Throttle feels good. And I'll put the cantaloupe tune in it, and you drive that. Once it stops raining, fuck yeah, that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have Christian drive the cam tune. I'm going to get the phone wet. Oh, my God. Just let it idle for a second, then you can go. Whoa! Crash it! You got it. Nope, or not. Very nice. So here I am driving around with a lope tune. Uh, it cleared up. It cleared up nicely after Christian drove it. I decided to leave it on the lope tune just to make sure that after a prolonged drive, there are no foreseen issues, and there aren't any. AC on, maintains about a 970 RPM idle, chopping just like this. Now, if you guys wear uh, earbuds, that's the best way to listen to this video and this idle. It really resonates when you have earbuds, and if you're looking at it in your phone, you're not gonna be able to hear what you can hear with an earbud, but this thing straight gets it. It's a fun car, everything's bedded, ready for its new owner. I'm really happy I was able to work on it for the last couple of days because I learned a ton of not only the way we calibrate but how the car reacts and what data the car likes to have in it and different people's driving habits so it's all about a learning process you never really know everything you're always learning a little something as a tuner the guy that tells you he knows everything is full of shit thanks for listening guys hopefully you enjoyed this long slightly technical slightly over explained video but that seems to be what you